Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at this math book. So this is a book that is considered a classic and we're just going to go through it slowly in this video and take a look at it. So this book, just let me just tell you first that the prereq for like buying this book and fully understanding what's in this book is going to be um, proof writing. So you have to know how to write mathematical proofs. Um, you can still buy the book and read it and learn and you're going to see things that you didn't even know existed and you're going to say, what is going on here? Uh, this is amazing, but I don't really know or understand all of it. There's a lot of mathematics in this book. Okay, so let me just say that. There's a lot of math. Um, it's a very, very dense book. So the book is called Mathematical Analysis and it was written by Apostle. And this one, I believe, has some damage somewhere. I can see if I can find it. Oh yeah, yeah, right here. There's some little holes here. And I think it's from a stapler. I don't know. I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see. Do you see those little holes? Look closely. There they are, right there. You see those holes? So I think I think that's from a stapler because there's two, there's a couple other ones down here or something was sitting against it. In any case, uh, this book is a collectible, I think, in my, in my view. Let's open it up. Wow, 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 look at this. Mathematical Analysis, A Modern Approach to Advanced Calculus by Tom M. Apostle, Department of Mathematics, California Institute of Technology. The book is releasing a smell that is incredible, so you just I just have to smell it here. Just, oh, wow. Oh, 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 is this just incredible? This book has such, it's like a perfume almost. It is incredible. as a sweet vanilla smell. This, this, this copy is really nice. 1957, wow, printed in the United States of America. This is the fourth printing, 1964. Ah, wow. Let's take a look here at the preface. Uh, usually these are pretty interesting, actually, and especially in these older books. Uh, I feel like in a lot of the newer books, they, they do spend a lot of time explaining, you know, the changes and stuff like that because they, you know, they do have multiple uh, changes. But here it says... A glance at the table of contents will reveal that most of the topics which usually fall under the heading Advanced Calculus are treated in this book. The author's aim has been to provide a development of the subject matter which is honest, rigorous, up-to-date, and at the same time, not too pedantic. Most of the hard theorems which are either omitted or treated rather skimpily in many texts on Advanced Calculus are proved here with great care. Some of them are ordinarily considered too difficult for a standard course in Advanced Calculus, but too elementary for a course in real or complex function theory. With the inclusion of these theorems, wow, so the, so the book includes them and they prove them. So with the inclusion of these theorems, the book helps to fill the gap between elementary calculus and advanced courses in analysis. More important than this, it introduces the reader to some of the abstract thinking that pervades in modern mathematics. Some of the features, yeah, wow, so it talks a little bit here uh, about some other things. Wow, it's just really, really interesting, right? So, and then um, here is, uh, the contents. Here are the contents. So we can take a look at these. Look at the contents. The real and complex number systems. Introduction, arithmetical properties of real numbers. Order properties of real numbers. Okay. Rational numbers. Some irrational numbers. Infimum and supremum. Complex numbers. Look at the page numbers. So it's very dense. It has a lot of little topics, right? You learn a lot. Complex powers, complex signs and cosines. It's just like one page, two pages. I mean, just complex exponentials, page 13, boom. The argument, you know, 15, I mean, just goes quickly. We'll take a look at all of that in a minute. Some basic notions of set theory. Elements of point set theory. Cool. And there's a lot more topics. I mean, look at this. There's just, there's just a lot here in this book. The limit, of, the limit concept and continuity. Differentiation of functions of one real variable. Differentiation of functions of several variables. And then we have applications of partial differentiation, functions of bounded variation, lots of stuff here. Theory of Riemann Stilts, I can never say that. <laughs> Integration, multiple integrals and line integrals. Yeah, so you can see there is a lot of mathematics in this book, just a ton of math. Um, the biggest cons of this book, the biggest con is that, um, you know, it is, it is a hard book. Um, but you're going to get a treatment that, um, you know, you're not going to get anywhere else. You get it from this book. So, 
Uh, definitely an awesome book. This book is actually less expensive, by the way, than the regular book by Apostle. I just want to emphasize that because that one took me a long time to get because it's so expensive. But mathematical analysis, that's, that's this one. This is, that's this book we're looking at. But Apostle has um, another book uh, that is more basic than this. It is called Calculus. And it's a two-volume set. I have, I have both. Um, and yeah, so that's a lot easier than this one. Uh, this is his analysis book, so it's a little bit more uh, advanced. You can see here how they just, here's the argument of a complex number. Let's take a look at this. This is really useful and interesting, and it explains how to get um, you know, various things in complex analysis. If the point z equals xy represented as a complex number x plus iy, so you can write it in polar, polar form, the two numbers r and theta uniquely determine z. Conversely, the positive number r is uniquely determined by z. In fact, r is equal to the modulus of z. That's, that's what that is. It's the distance between. So if you plot the complex number on a complex plane, that's going to be the distance from when you think of it as an ordered pair to the origin. That's going to be the modulus of z geometrically, okay? Uh, but it says here, z determines the angle theta only by up to multiples of 2 pi. Only up to multiples of 2 pi. Right. There are infinitely many values of theta which satisfy these equations. Yes. Of course, any two of them differ by some multiple of 2 pi. Each such theta is called an argument of z. It's really important. But one of these values is singled out and is called the principal argument of z. So that, so we just read that together. That, to me, that was um, crystal clear. And I think that is a testament to this book, right? I mean, that, that's, again, um, beautiful. Very well explained. Let's look here. Definition. And if you didn't understand that, it's okay. I've seen this before. Um, you know, that could be also why I thought it was crystal clear, but uh, I, I like the way he explains this particular concept. You know, I've read this in other books, this, this explanation, but they've taken longer to explain it. Uh, you know, Apostle does it here in just one little paragraph. Um, now, there's more, there's notation you can introduce, of course, and you can do examples. Here we go. Let's see what he does here. Let x equal, let z equal x plus iy be a non-zero complex number. The unique real number theta, which defines the conditions, so we have this here, is called the principal argument of z denoted by, so here, here he's introducing the notation, okay. The above discussion immediately yields the following theorem. So different books do it different ways. Um, I have another book, I have a book on complex variables that will use like a capital A for the principal argument, and they'll consider this a set of all possible, but here it's, it's saying, it's defining theta to be this, so this is the principal argument. And this is the notation they're using in this book. So that's something you need to be aware of when you're learning mathematics. Um, you know, notations can differ uh, from book to book. So something to watch out there for. Let's see, theorem, every complex number z not equal to zero can be represented in the form, okay. All right, so this is basically uh, showing that you can write complex numbers in this, in this polar form. And notice uh, here, um, theta is equal to the principal argument plus 2 pi n. Yeah, very nice. So this formulation, again, is sometimes done with different notation in other books, but this is a very key idea. It's fundamental. You've got this principal argument, um, and you're adding a multiple of 2 pi to it, and that theta is going to give you the same complex number. This method of representing complex numbers is particularly useful in connection with multiplication and division. Yes, since we have these properties here. Yeah, look how, look how convenient that is, right? Properties of exponents say you just add the arguments, right? And then properties of exponents say you subtract, and it works perfectly. Um, yeah, and then you have a theorem here and a proof. This is a little bit more, right? So integrals, powers, and roots of complex numbers. Cool. So you can spend, you can see, you can spend hours uh, on this book. You know, just getting through a few pages. Uh, you sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper, and you just work through the mathematics. You know. Anyways, I just wanted to sit down with you and just take a quick look at this book. And yeah, I like it. Uh, I think it's a great book. I will try to find copies. If I do, I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. By the way, if you want to learn analysis uh, or advanced calculus, I actually do have a course on advanced calculus. It doesn't cover as much content as this book does. I'll just, it's just there's no way, right? Uh, this book is insane. Uh, but it does have you know, a decent amount of content, um, mostly advanced calc one stuff. It might have some other stuff as well. It's on my website, mathsorcerer.com. Uh, it's actually on the Udemy website, but if you get my courses, just please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com, because 
Um, I lowered the prices to make them as low as possible. So if you use my links, you will definitely get a low price. Also, it helps me greatly if you use my links. So yeah, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com, same thing. And um, I've got, of course, some advanced calculus, a bunch of calculus courses if you're not ready for advanced calculus. Um, I've got some trig. It's two courses. That's pretty good. Uh, differential equations. I've got two courses on differential equations. Those are good. I've got two Calc 1 courses. I've got a Calc 2 course, Calc 3 course. A uh, bunch of other courses as well. So yeah, check it out. Mathsorcer.com. Uh, tons of courses that you can use to learn math. Some of them have assignments. Some of them don't. Some of them have tons of videos. So And they're all organized and stuff. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, if you take away anything from this uh, video is that this is a great book on mathematical analysis. It's one of those books that you can sit down with and just spend a great deal of time with, right? You really can. It's awesome. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.